Hey guys, happy weekend. We have uh, two discussion topics to uh, go over with you today. The first one is that we will go over the flux curve of Tabby Star that was updated yesterday, August 25th by Bruce Gary. And our second one is we will go over our visual magnitude, our V-band equation of the accelerating long-term dimming of Tabby Star. And we'll predict just how much dimmer the star will get as time progresses. So this is the normalized light curve of Tabby Star in the V-band, updated yesterday, August 25th. And this is the normalized flux line, which is synonymous to the accelerating long-term dimming curve. And this is yesterday's measurement showing we are still at the nominal flux level. Today is also showing we are still tracking on the nominal flux line. So for our second topic, we finalized our equation for the accelerating long-term dimming curve of Tabby Star and converted it to calculate the visual magnitude in the V-band rather than the normalized flux. What you see here are the data that David Lane, otherwise known as LDJ, posted on AAVSO, and it goes all the way back to October 27th of 2015. The vast majority of this data was taken from the Burke Gaffney Observatory on the campus of St. Mary's University in Nova Scotia, Canada. And here are some photos to show you the sophistication of that observatory. This is an aerial view of the observatory, and this is an inside view of the dome interior. And this is the telescope that was used to make the measurements of Tabby Star that we will now use to finalize the equation of the accelerating long-term dimming curve. So here again is the complete list of measurements of Tabby Star taken in the V-band from October 27th of 2015 through August 11th of 2017. And creating a scatter plot of all the data points results in the following graph. The data points colored in blue were the ones taken during the three short-term dimming events and are not being considered in fitting the best curve for the accelerating long-term dimming curve. The four data points colored in red are the best estimate set of points within the scatter plot that have the highest probability of intersecting the best fit curve of the accelerating long-term dimming curve. It should be noted that in consideration of all this data, our previous version of the accelerating long-term dimming curve did not quite fit the older measurements of this data set. The calculated curve from this equation was too linear and hence was at a higher flux level than the older measurement data was at. So we had to add an additional acceleration term to the equation to account for this. So here is the visual magnitude equation of the accelerating long-term dimming curve of Tabby Star in the V-band with initial conditions, units, and base definitions. The initial condition is the measurement taken on November 9, 2015 with a visual magnitude of 11.833 taken from the Burke Gaffney Observatory in the V-band. The variable t in the equation is expressed as the number of months from the initial condition. Use only positive months that are more recent than the initial conditions. In other words, use only positive values for variable t. The equation does not go back in time beyond the initial condition. And the base of the equation is the natural logarithm. So comparing the measured V-band data with the corresponding calculated values for those same dates using this equation, we have an extremely good match across the four data points. And these four data points represent the best fit curve profile of the accelerating long-term dimming of Tabby Star. Before we go any further and make our extrapolations and predictions, we want to briefly show you the meaning of visual magnitude. The higher the visual magnitude number, the dimmer the object is. This chart shows that for every whole number increase in visual magnitude, say from a magnitude of a 6 to a magnitude of a 5, there is a 2.51 times increase in brightness, or a 251% increase. And increasing to a magnitude of 4, you get a 2.51 times a 2.51, or a 6.3 times increase in brightness. And this continues on, as shown in the chart, with a magnitude of a number 1, with a brightness 100 times greater than the magnitude of 6. 
The second chart shows another way of looking at visual magnitude. A star with a magnitude of around six or seven can be seen with the naked eye on a dark night. A visual magnitude of around nine will need a good uh, pair of binoculars, and a visual magnitude of around 12 will need about a three inch telescope. And a visual magnitude of 13 will require a six inch telescope. And then when you get around, say, 14 to 15, it will require a 12 inch telescope. And finally, for a visual magnitude of 20, uh, it will require a 200 inch telescope to view the object. So we are going to predict the fade to black date. And to do so, we need to know the faintest object that can be imaged by both ground and space-based telescopes. This article describes the limiting magnitude or the magnitude of the object where it cannot be seen anymore. And for the Hubble Ultra Deep Field campaign, which was a space-based campaign, it was able to reach a limiting magnitude of 31 after staring at a patch of sky for 10 solid days. The faintest object reliably detected from the ground at visual wavelengths were captured by the 8.2 meter Subaru telescope in Hawaii. The Subaru Deep Field Survey used 10 hours of exposure time and the faintest blips that it captured with a signal to noise ratio of at least three had a visual magnitude of 27.7. And this was about 20 times brighter than the corresponding Hubble Ultra Deep Field Limit. Now for the fun guys, it's extrapolation and prediction time. You know, on Reddit, we have been accused of extrapolating too much and too far into the future. But it's kind of like buying a brand new sports car and never seeing what it can do on the road, just keeping it in the garage all the time. Well, guys, after spending all that time and effort perfecting this equation, we are going to commit this heinous crime of extrapolation again. You guys on Reddit might want to cover your delicate ears and eyes and take the kids out of the room because we're going to see some extrapolation going on here. So let's do it. Filling in the calculated values across this scatter plot, we get this best fit calculated curve of the accelerating long-term dimming of Tabby Star. Now going even further into the future, we get this curve and these corresponding calculated data points. Our prediction is that for the vast majority of ground-based telescopes, our original date of 2031 still holds. Only the largest state-of-the-art telescopes holding long exposure times will be able to faintly see Tabby Star. Today's brightness of Tabby Star will be 62,500 times brighter than in 2031. And our prediction is that for all space-based telescopes, Tabby Star will fade to black the year of 2034. Today's brightness of Tabby Star will be approximately 250 million times brighter than it will be in 2034. So we can now add this new information to what we already know about the long-term dimming of Tabby Star. So we are adding the derived equation that allows us to calculate the accelerating curve of the long-term dimming expressed as the visual magnitude in the V-band. And we are also slightly changing the wording on the limiting magnitude, you know, the fade to black to read. The long-term acceleration of Tabby Star is the predominant feature of the star and will cause the star to reach beyond its limiting magnitude and become undetectable by most ground-based telescopes by November 2031 with a magnitude of 23.62 and undetectable by all space and ground telescopes by November 2034 with a magnitude of 33.918 at the current projected accelerating dimming rate. So guys, that is all we have. Uh, guys, when we do not post a video, you can assume that the flux levels of Tabby Star are at or near the nominal flux level. We will let you know if anything is happening. So take care guys, and we will see you in our next video.